Ah, making a video. Mostly. <laughs> Cat's got its little leg up in the air there. It's very cute. Ah, uh, but anyway, you can't see it probably. It doesn't matter. Uh, lots of stuff going on. Very busy. I do have the computer finally working. This one over here. So, um, I should render this video on that computer, so we'll see how it goes. Let's do some speed tests and see which computer is better, and then uh, at least I'll have redundancy, so when tragedy arrives, I will be ready. Perhaps, maybe. Possibly. Anyway, um, we'll see. Anything else news? It's always something. So somebody did post something, you know, on something useful for a change. Um, yeah, on the um, yeah on the website. You know, every now and then somebody posts a link over there on that tool, the old tools. So I do have new, fancy, modern ones. But anyway, so it's uh, but it is useful. Thank you to people who do play along. Appreciate it. Um, so there's this guy, Thinking Ape, is what he calls himself. And uh, I don't know how much thing he really does. Anyway, so he's talking about anti-natalism and Schopenhauer. And um, so far, so boring. Um, so, you know, it's five minutes into it. He's just yammering, yangering, getting around to the subject. Blah, 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 blah. So I'll play some of that so you get a feel for it. You would probably need some means of measuring that and quantifying it. And you would need lots of samples to do that. And I think that probably an impossibility. Prop so, um, he's talking about measuring pain against pleasure, which really isn't the argument. It, I mean, it's part of the argument, but, you know, you could just reference Benatar instead of Schopenhauer and go with the simple beauty of the asymmetry argument, um, where you can't lose if you don't put lose on the board, because there's the win is not necessary. So I could just make the simple argument. There's nobody on Venus having a good time looking at rainbows, doing all this nonsense that we're doing here that we think is so important. And somehow we don't lament the absent Venetians. We don't cry for them. No, no, don't cry for me Argentina stuff. Just doesn't happen because we don't really think it's a diminished universe because there's no Venetians. And it's just the truth. And it wouldn't be diminished if we weren't here. And the simple truth is by not being here, we cure cancer, <laughs> we cure AIDS, we cure all the bad things that happen, and we certainly prevent all the real horrible, horrible stuff that happens to some individuals. Some individuals get it really, really bad, and when you're endorsing life, you're basically just saying, I'm worth it. Go ahead, torture them. Torture the real losers in life really, really horribly, because I'm worth it. That's all you're saying. And obviously, I think logically, that's a bullshit thing to say. So anyway, there's the argument right there. Um, so you know I did this personal measurement thing, but I don't even think you're being honest to Schopenhauer. Um, you know, he is boring to read and all this kind of stuff, but there was lots of stuff in there where he talked about optimism bias in a sense, where he talked about the nature of desire, and it's just desire that drags you into the game. Okay, it's not logic or reason. So he basically said, he has a famous quote, you know, if you about this whole idea, if you were to rationally... Uh, make a judgment uh, there, there's no judgment to be made so it's obviously not a rational judgment it's just a it's one based on a desire an incompleteness an unfulfilled aspiration that's inside of you that bigots you that prejudices your judgment that's the whole point it's a prejudice judgment not a rational judgment so um, yeah it makes it a lot easier to make these evaluations when you do that kind of thing. I quite obviously would have no desire to be born in Indonesia. If I was to die today and wake up tomorrow as an Indonesian, poor, ignorant, all that kind of stuff, short, who knows. Um, I don't want to live that life. I don't want to volunteer for it. And I don't like that somebody else is going to basically force me to, whether I like it or not. And that's sort of the question here. Who has a right to create life? big deal creating life, you know, not a little deal. Probably very, very difficult to do, if impossible, so I'm not really sure if that's a tenable position. 
I think it's <clears throat> Again, you, you're not sure it's tenable for me to make evaluations and say, for me, it's quite obvious, okay? Maybe it's not obvious for somebody else, and I guess I would argue that if it's not obvious, it's because their desire... Okay, they have a whole bunch of extra stuff they want to get done. I gotta jump out of an airplane. I gotta go bungee jumping. I gotta blah blah blah. I gotta blah blah blah. So they got a whole bunch of agenda that they're all obsessed with. And it doesn't have anything to do with again. It doesn't have anything to do with anything called rational reason or any of that kind of stuff. It's like right now there could be some person's all horny for going into space or something. They just oh my life just won't be complete till I get into space. Well, obviously two thousand years ago nobody needed to get shot into space. They thought they'd get burned by the sun if they did, so they weren't all that excited about it. So it's just a superficial, idiotic notion in the head. Notions in the head, that's all they are. And, and you got to recognize that some of these notions, some of these ideas in your head, don't have anything to do with something that really has to happen. And what really doesn't need to happen is you don't need to have a bunch of, I don't need personally, a bunch of people I don't even know living in the future fly into Alpha Centauri. I don't want to be one of them. I don't want to even <laughs> I don't want them to do it because I just think it's goddamn waiting to get it's waiting for pain. It's just asking pain to show up and uh, drop the hammer. To believe that position and I'm certainly tempted because I, I would for myself I'd probably argue that um, difficult to say but on on in that, on aggregate, yeah, I mean, life seems to entail a lot more suffering than it does uh, pleasure. Yeah, I don't even know if that's the way to look at it. I mean, the idea is, in my opinion, to look at is is there are there non-starter events that happen in life? You know, events that just make it untenable as a as an equation. It, they can last a day, they can last ten days, they can last a month. There can be things that happen to you that are just so bad that yeah, forget it. I wouldn't do that over again, no matter how much cherries and and sprinkles you put on the cupcake I'm not I'm not buying it at that price and so it doesn't take much it doesn't take much bad it doesn't take, look it's the bad apple argument one bad apple ruins the pie kind of thing all you need is that poison pill of bad enough and yeah I ain't going there so yeah if you're gonna give me like say 30 years of a really great life and then you're gonna give me ALS and I'm gonna spend the next 10 years suffocating to death no, thank you. Or, in my case, I think my life entails more homeostasis than either. I'm perfectly fine with homeostasis, though. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Yeah, we're all perfectly fine with nothing. Okay, great. Who cares? I, I wouldn't volunteer for nothing at the risk of bad something. So, to talk about your homeostasis is in, in any other context, but the reality that we live in, which is billions of sentient creatures will suffer every day, horrible death and all that crap, and to say, well, my homeostasis is worth it. Well, your homeostasis really isn't worth it. Uh, let's jump ahead a little bit. This just will take forever if we don't. Earth and then subsequently life necessarily entail more suffering than, than joy or pleasure. And really not the question, but I mean, obviously we all can personally answer that question and Who's going to tell me I'm wrong? Nobody. I mean, all like I said, all that somebody can say is, is they have incomplete or unsatisfied desire. But they can't make a rational argument until they show me how many, how many tissues of tears they have cried for the absent Martians, or cried for the absent Venetians, or cried for the absent Munikins, or cried for all the other things that could possibly exist. Why aren't they lamenting their non-existence? Why aren't they lamenting the non-existence of the billion extra people we could have on Earth if we paid people to have kids? I don't see any of that. None of that. Once again, the problem here is people don't... This modus operandi is, is, is ingrained in us by evolutionary... Processes. Oh, whatever. We're way past all this evolution crap, okay? You're talking philosophy, Mr. Gorilla Man. Um, <clears throat> I mean, what's, what's the point of showing Schopenhauer's image, okay? A guy who did some thinking and blah, 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 and did say a lot of shit that's just nonsense. But I'm just, it's just stupid to sit there and have a conversation about our biology 
and, and when you're supposed to be doing something called philosophy, because philosophy really doesn't give a shit what your biology says. The questions of philosophy are, is there anything in the nature of your stupid psychology that's worth a damn? And I would argue that as Schopenhauer concluded, and as I have concluded, and maybe perhaps you have even concluded, but you don't even recognize the context of the question, no, we're just fucktarded, idiotic, dumb bug, bug humans, all right? We're not much better than bugs. You have a bunch of silly, stupid desires, and when you become smart enough to know you, you live in the context of something called civilization and a higher obligation, it just becomes a nuisance and a, and, a, and a tragedy because you realize just how dirty and stinking and rotten the game is. Your comfort's going to be built out of somebody else's discomfort. You want to look at the shiny diamond. Some asshole has to go three miles down the ground and, you know, get suffocated to death for it. I mean, it all comes at a horrendous price. It's just a dirty, stinking, ugly, stinking bug planet. Um... Yeah, quit playing games. You don't need nature to tell you what the truth is. Use your brain. Intelligence will tell you. I think this is not... People don't have children because they think it's going to create more joy in the world or bring more joy into the world. In fact, I can read off an article. Yeah, who cares? You can read off any article you want to read about. It's people have kids because for ego reasons, okay? It's completely cultural. It's like... It's like going to baseball games. People don't go to baseball games because nature makes them do it. They go to baseball games because they're raised by a culture that says baseball is cool. And that's it. No other reason. And it's the same reason they have stupid fucking idiotic kids. It's because they want to wear them like clothes. They want to wear them like a fancy car. It's some sort of ego bullshit. They need to have more of them in the world. Even though their kid's not going to be a goddamn thing like them. There's actually been research to suggest that Who cares? having children on aggregate makes you less happy overall. Yeah, who cares? On aggregate, this this stupid idiotic thing. Let's all let's just ask people whether they're happy or not, and in the in some sort of context where they know what kind of answer they're supposed to give for whatever reason. That's like asking people, "Are you generous and sympathetic?" <laughs> yeah, of course I am. Yes, I'll put an X there. I'm very generous and sympathetic. I mean, come on. There's no point in having people self-testify to anything. Stupid. That, that's just pseudoscience, as they say. Moving ahead. Well, the University of York in Great Britain, whose own academic work concludes that there is no difference between the life satisfaction levels of parents and non-parents, Oh, whatever. Life satisfaction levels. Now, isn't that just a... So here you are all troubled back here about how to make any of these decisions and blah, blah, blah. And then you're going to sit there and quote, complete pussy science. I mean, just mushy, gummy bear science where you're going to ask people how they feel. Pfft. Fuck. Summarizes the existing studies. Using data sets from Europe... Oh, please. slightly less happiness than non-parents of similar age and status... Oh, again, this self-testifying just doesn't mean a damn thing. This is not a, a, a conscious desire, although it might mani have conscious manifestations. It might even have linguistic manifestations. Oh, I would love to have children. I would love... Uh, it's been a dream to be a parent my whole life. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. This has nothing to do with the root instinct. Uh, right, the root instinct is sex, the, but the root instinct is also the alpha syndrome, the uh, ego thing. Okay, so that's the real player here. People think they need a certain thing to achieve a certain status, and that's what they're after. I mean, I think for a lot of men, they just say, okay, bitch, whatever you want. You know, they just acquiesce to the woman's desire, and the woman just has a desire to just, I think... Yeah, frankly, they they have this choice. Well, I can take care of a little baby all day and eat bonbons and watch TV, or I can go to work. And they decide, oh, I don't want to do that. I don't want to go to work, so I'll have a baby instead. Who knows what they're thinking, but whatever they're thinking, it's all goddamn silly mush. Um, this whole idea that playing Frankenstein when you don't even have medical degrees, you don't know what the fuck you're doing. You don't know even what close what you're stepping into. You don't have all the people who have kids. We we can know that none of them can answer a survey questionnaire about something real. Like, do they know the the real probability of certain outcomes? Uh, 
and and uh, you know what what if 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 that's if the worst happens, what are you going to do about it? Right, you're going to just say my bad. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry you have ALS. Oh, I'm sorry you're six years old and you have cancer. I'm sorry. Yeah, right, right. Not good enough. So studies like this. Once again, I talked about something vaguely similar in the unquantifiable liability, but you could produce dozens, maybe even millions of studies that show across the board that parents are less happy. It's really irrelevant. I really, you know, we shouldn't even be talking about a subject like this based on what's your personal gain in this thing, okay? We're talking about something really serious. You're creating life. You're going to impose a consciousness on an entity. You're going to put it into a world where it's going to have to fight with other people for its sustenance. It will, if it will, if it's going to live comfortably, it's going to have to first world itself, and first world itself usually means you have to third world somebody else. This is the game we're playing, all right? And people have to take that a little bit goddamn seriously, and it really doesn't have a goddamn thing to do with whether what you feel what you want. It's a responsibility first, not second, first. Less content, less satisfied with life than non-parents. And you know what? Very little would change. Because people follow the autopilot. People are on autopilot. <clears throat> no, people aren't. It's not just the autopilot. They, they follow where the, yeah, the sheep, they're sheeple. So it's, to call it autopilot is to, is to miss the point. The point is, is that all we have to do is change the the dominant memes, you know, change the rhetoric, uh, a few celebrity endorsements for the opposite behavior, and it can that can make all the difference in the world. That's right, because most people are just are mindless, stupid, ignorant twats that'll just do what everybody else is doing. So if you start making other people dance a different dance, they'll start diff dancing a different dance. So. Getting back to antinatalism, the problem with antinatalism... Yeah, it doesn't really have a problem. Actually, actually, it's already won the argument, right? As I have to keep pointing out, most people, the vast majority of people, are not reproducing at a rate sufficient to maintain human existence. So the, the, the top 80% of the, whether you go by intelligence or even how tall they are or whatever standard you have, the top 80% are already breeding at an antinatalist rate. And it's only the bottom 20, turds, assholes, ignoramuses, that are doing all the uh, excess breeding. That are creating all of the, not only the sustainable po sustaining population, but all of the excess population. So again, the argument's already been won. And the only thing that has to be done is we've got to put a cork in these, these poor ignorant pigs who think they are entitled to have five kids on welfare. Isn't that the position is untenable? Uh, in fact, um, David Benatar, who is a fairly thin oh yeah, see now it's a little late in this video to bring up Benatar. Right, he's halfway through the video. Wow. I mean, if you're going, if you have knowledge of him, I mean, you really shouldn't have waited till halfway through the video to get to him because yeah, his argument's the most slam dunk simplest of them all. In this antinatalist, he's a South African philosopher. I read. Uh, snippets of some of his publications, and he uh, he's made some compelling arguments. Uh, quote, it's kind of a, it's basically a syllogism. Well, there are four parts, but, you know, quote, the presence of pain is bad, the presence of pleasure is good. The absence of pain is good, even if that good is not enjoyed by anyone. The absence of pleasure is not bad, unless there is somebody for whom this absence is a deprivation. Exactly. So there you go. That last one's the big one. The absence of your desire is not a tragedy. If your desire does not exist in somebody, if nobody ever wants to go to a baseball game ever again, it's not going to be a tragedy. It really isn't. So basically, arguing that life itself uh, needn't exist. If, if there's no pleasure and there's no life to begin with, it's not really a big deal. There's no tragedy. That's right. There's no tragedy in not creating desires that don't need to exist. That's right. No tragedy. Where there is real tragedy in the fact that 
imposing life imposes suffering, imposes torture. And it's just a fact. It's imposed torture. And that's bad for real Z. Once again, a rather compelling moral argument and one that will ultimately... It's not a moral argument. It's an ethical argument. It's an, uh, an, an argument from efficiency, an argument from reason, an argument from logic. So let's not call it a moral argument. It's a logical argument. The desire doesn't need to exist. And it's only when the desire exists that the desire needs to be satisfied. The desire is a projection <coughs> of value. It is not a definition of an actual value. Where the suffering animal or the suffering human is an actual value recognized to exist in the actual world. Big difference. Imaginary delusion in the head, just a notion, a notion of value versus real value. Following deaf ears. I think if we could accept the premise that life necessarily entails more suffering than joy. Uh, again, this is your, you know, why, why bring up Benatar when you're just going to waver off the course, so to speak. Jump ahead a little. Is you could produce all of these studies and people would not be, quote unquote, convinced that they are not doing the right thing. They, Happiness be damned. Again, it, the, the convincing them just it w re requires a real public argument in the first place. They haven't been exposed to the argument. And I think if they're exposed to it in the, with the proper metaphors, where you basically point out, well, explain to me exactly how you're not behaving exactly like Dr. Frankenstein. You think you're competent. You think you can control the experiment. If the experiment goes all bad, you have no solution. But I'm sorry. Well, I'm sorry doesn't cut it. If it's actually the case that routinely and systematically reproduction leads to less happiness and life satisfaction, people... Oh, again, irrelevant to the question. Just does it really? I really just should be irrelevant to the question. This is serious. This is more serious than driving a car. This is more serious than deciding whether to, I don't know, dump certain kind of waste into the lake or something or what to do with your sewage or this is you can't get much bigger as a decision goes than this whole I'm gonna play creator thing <sighs> it really doesn't have anything to do with your personal fucking interest or your personal needs it really should not it really can only be an appealing position if you're willing to step out of the autopilot mode and consider sometimes highfalutin arguments and philosophical arguments. Yeah, well, whatever. It's not very highfalutin. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm going to impose consciousness on another being, and I'm going to have it play a game where I know the rule is deserve will have nothing to do with it. You will not get what you deserve in life. Okay, there's just no, no chance of it. And you might get completely the opposite of what you would have rationally or thoughtfully or sensibly deserved. You will get, uh, you will have nothing but bad luck. Arguments that just aren't applicable to most people and most people don't even consider it to begin with. Right, because no one requires them to consider it, because no one requires them to be reasonable or rational. Nobody shoves it in their face, it takes their little face and shoves it in the dirty poo-poo they, they're they're endorsing and creating in the world. No one shoves their face in the global warming uh, or in the unnecessary harm and suffering or in the exploitation they perpetuate in the world. No one forces them to live the life of the Chinaman. <laughs> yeah, no one. Reasonable position to say, look, I know I'm not going to be necessarily happy or more, or more satisfied with life by having children, but my biological urge compels me, and so I'm going to do it. Well, again, there is no biological urge to have children. There's biological urge to have sex. The, the evolution never needed to go any further than that. We wouldn't even understand if it did go further than that. We wouldn't, if somebody could want to have kids, and they wouldn't know, animals wouldn't know how to make that happen necessarily. They, you know, it doesn't, it isn't obvious. 
okay, from the gameplay. Um, so that wouldn't work anyway. So yeah, it, it doesn't need to make us do anything more then. Okay, I mean, if salmon don't swim up the stream because they think they're procreating. Hey, I'm going to go lay some eggs or I'm going to go fertilize some eggs and make baby salmon. They're not thinking anything like that. And humans aren't either. And the reason why they're thinking about this stupid baby crap uh, is because the society has somehow uh, spiritualized the prego and made it like the most beautiful act you can commit is, you know, to play Frankenstein. Anyway, that's a reasonable position because that's acknowledging, on the one hand, the, the moral or rather the reality of contentment or the reality, or indeed the moral reality of things, but it's all... Who cares about this? It's just moral reality. Why, again, what, what's the point? What's the point and on anti-natalism? And you're showing Schopenhauer's picture again. This wouldn't really have anything to do with anything called morality. It would have to do with something called logic. But Schopenhauer is obviously an atheist, too, for the most part. You somehow align having children with necessarily being happy. And despite... Still talking about happiness... Yeah, people align a lot of things with a lot of things, and they have desires, and some of their desires sometimes are just totally inappropriate, and they just have to deal with the fact that they have inappropriate desires. It happens to some people, right? So if you have some desire to be, to play Frankenstein, have your own little monster to unconditionally love you, and do all this stuff because you need it, well, as soon as you say the words, because I need it, you should understand, wait a minute, this is a little bit too heavy a deal for my I need it. That's like a slave owner saying I need slaves because I need a comfortable life. Well, that's just bullshit. That doesn't entitle you to anything. That doesn't qualify you. I need, I need does not, is not a definition of a qualification. Yeah. Rocky Mystery is actually a philosophical natalist because he believes everything from nature has to be good and everything that he's doing and everything that he participates in life and is also a good thing as well. And yeah, well, that makes him a retard, whoever you're talking about. He has to link this all up. He cannot, a guy like him, he cannot separate... Oh, I guess we got to find out who he's talking about. ...produce evidence to suggest, and I think that the certainly observation tends to lend credence to this, that life necessarily entails more suffering than joy or pleasure. That would also be a counter. Redundant. So... A guy like Meraki Nestoridis is actually a philosophical natalist because he believes everything. A guy like Meraki Nestoridis? What the fuck? Anyway, I guess it's a, some YouTube personality or something. I don't know. Pretty much. But uh, yeah, I'm, to say I'm, I'm happy, I don't even like that term. But yeah, there's a lot of homeostasis going on, I think. But I look at, at natalism as a probably more more wrong, if you will, of a position than antinatalism, because at least antinatalism is willing to divorce certain biological functions from the philosophical, whereas natalists have, are just, are invested in naturalistic fallacies and are invested in... Well, <clears throat> it's not that they're, it's not even naturalistic fallacies, it's, it's this idea that somehow because nature gave me sperm, that means nature wouldn't have given it to me unless it thought I knew what to do with it, like I was competent to use it. So that's the catch here, is that we're basically given a, a, a capacity. And, uh, yeah, we have no... So, so what if, you know, we had glands that could shoot sulfuric acid? <laughs> you know, we all were born with this gland that could shoot acid. Well, we would know that we would have to have some higher order of of rules about how we would use this thing. We wouldn't just automatically say, well, because you have it, you can shoot it anywhere you want. You can do whatever you want with your acid shooting gland. Yeah, we would know that, no, you really can't do whatever you want with it. Um, and we'd force people to be, um, you know, circumspent. We would <laughs> force them to be, um, we'd force them to obey some sort of rules uh, before they shot their, their acid aligning uh, biological processes and biological compunctions and compulsions with some sort of moral compass which isn't there to begin with. As I said, there could be a thousand different studies 
all citing that parents are utterly miserable compared to non-parents, and people would still go along with the, I need to make copies of my genes. Again, so this is a fallacy. Sorry, that's just not true. People would still go along. No, most people aren't the problem. So again, all this requires is for the rational people who have some sort of apprehension and don't just pop out five kids in a sewer. They're, most people, if they were living in a cardboard box, the first thing they would be thinking isn't going to be, let's make some kids. Yeah, most people who went to high school or college aren't going to say, what's the response to me living in a cardboard box with sewage flowing outside the front of the little cutout in my cardboard box? Oh yeah, ha let's have some kids. Yeah, that wouldn't be their response. Most people aren't the problem. There's a minority of human beings. Let me say it again. A small minority of human beings that are the entire fucking problem. Okay, the human race is extinct in a few dozen generations uh, if you just cork uh, ignorance on planet Earth. If you just force the ignorance to wear some sort of gun restraint, uh, yeah, <laughs> the antinatalists win appropriately. Thing. It's, I guess it's the oldest meme out there, and then, you know, post-talk rationalization such as, I always wanted children, and they're the apple of my eye, and bring joy to my life, and blah, blah, you know. Blah. Yeah, I know, exactly, blah, blah, blah. The point is, is that we've already won this argument. Again, most people don't want five kids, so even if they're having kids, they don't want five, they don't even want four. If they have them, sometimes they want two, or three, or one. That's what they're doing, most people. So most people don't need this speech. They just don't, okay? Even if they're not anti-natalist in, in philosophy, they're anti-natalist in action in the sense that they're not having sufficient kids to maintain human existence. And again, so it's a minority of people, a small number of people who haven't gotten on the, who aren't in some way being dragged by the bandwagon, if not sitting on it, right? So, so maybe there's only the intellectuals and the elitists and the rest of them sitting on the bandwagon saying, hey, fuckhead, you're not competent to create life. And maybe there's a few just clinging to it or stuck to it or roped to it and they're just going along because it's convenient to them not to have too many kids. And so they're accidentally doing our work for us. But the point is, is the only people we have to fix are the dumbest, stupidest, idiotic people on planet Earth, the people with the lowest frickin' IQs on planet Earth, and no one has the balls to say, let's sit there and tell those assholes what they can and cannot do? It's time to tell the assholes to stop making a mess. It's time to tell the assholes to stop making a mess. Fuck. Oh, the whole smorgasbord. So what is my position on antinatalism? sympathetic neutrality. Oh, no. I'm too much of a pragmatist to actually be an antinatalist. It's just, it's not, it's a position that's interesting and entertaining, but only in the limited realm of... Right, so you're uh, all for imposing suffering, having stupid people make judgments for smart people, right? Dumb people sometimes have smart kids, and it's okay, they can torture those kids. I don't have an opinion. I'm too fucking lazy to have an opinion. I'm too goddamn lazy to give a fuck about the victims who are going to pay a horrendous price for this natalism shit. The real losers, again. Let's go back to the ones who really lose, okay? Uh, lots of them in history. I could bring up little child stars who died, you know, at 13 or something. Right? Remember that little, little kid from the little girl with the white hair from whatever it was? She died in some fucking stupid, idiotic, horrible way. Uh, you know, I could just bring up that shit and say, is that worth it, you fuckhead? I could bring up the little Chinese kid, run over on YouTube, <laughs> over and over and over and over again. Is there anything you're doing that's worth that, you fucking glib bastard? No. So, but yeah, you'll just be a glib little pussy shit who thinks, well, it doesn't really matter what our opinions are because everything will turn out exactly the same. No, it does matter, shithead. Fuck. And why do you think this jackass wrote books? It's because it does matter, douchebag. He didn't write a book saying, 
well, let's all just be wishy-washy. I can write 900 pages on just being wishy-washy and vacuous. Oh, let's all be vacuous and be proud of it. Fuck you. Take a stand or shut the fuck up or fall off the fucking planet for all I give a damn. You useless fence-sitting piece of shit. Of moral philosophy and, and people, uh, people just aren't interested in really talking about that. Within that context, it could be right. Yeah, well, I'm really uninterested, again, in people who can't even form an opinion. Yeah, oh yeah, so something as important as imposing life, imposing torture, ah, uh, I can't seem to form an opinion. I guess it's okay. Maybe. Not for me, though. I personally wouldn't want to be a torturer, but you can go ahead and do it. Is that the best you can do? It's like, I, I personally am against, I personally wouldn't rape, but yeah, you can go ahead and do it. Yeah, you're a real Einstein. But you would have to quantify things more. You would have to have enough data and information to suggest that suffering does in fact outweigh happiness, joy, and so on. And so well, you've already said, maybe you should quit reading little snippets, okay? And go read Benatar's book and you'll get the whole optimism bias thing and then you'll get the whole idea about the not bad concept. That having something that's not bad is the same as it being a good. A not bad is just as good as a good. So forth. So it's not a, but it's certainly a much more tenable position than natalism in the sense that natalist just... Doesn't make any fucking sense. It's more tenable, but I can't, I don't, I wouldn't choose it. It's more tenable, but I, I, I'm going to sit on the fence. Does that make any sense? No. Come up with sort of all sorts of weird artificial arguments that don't actually support their the position. It's I mean, it, once again, it is a this is so important, and I'm sure most of my subs understand this. <laughs> yeah, it's so important that you can't form an opinion. You can't be decisive. You're going to sit on a stupid fence and 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 glibly talk about it like it means something. Do a video about it. Show Schopenhauer, and then just sit there and basically fart on the whole damn thing. Ugh. Yeah, no wonder Rizzle Dizzle said this is exactly his opinion, right? Somewhere in this comments he says something like that, you know. I mean, you know, just amaze. This guy says it exactly the way I would say it. I'm too fucking goddamn busy being an asshole and too obsessed with my own fucking interest to give a goddamn rat's ass about torture and suffering of anyone else but me. Fucking cunts. Distinction, but... We have these natural processes, these compulsions, these instincts. Sex. There is no moral quality or character to any of this. This is just clockwork. This is just autopilot. The mistake... Uh, that again, it's, this is just a stupid statement to make. Obviously, we haven't just autopiloted. That's why we. Uh, that's why women are now, uh, whatever, citizens. <laughs> okay, that's why we abolish slavery. That's why we abolish bullfighting in America. That's why we abolish dogfighting in America and cockfighting in America. It's because we grew up a little bit. We don't burn witches at the stake anymore. So obviously this isn't just nothing happening. There's something happening. Thinking matters, fuckhead. I mean, I don't, I don't like these people that steal images. I mean, stealing an ape over here, which is kind of insulting to gorillas. Gorillas aren't as dumb as you thinking ape guy. I mean, even gorillas could figure out what fucking side of the bush to stand on. All right, they can tell whether there's some. I'm either going to kick its ass or I'm going to fuck it. That's what a gorilla says. I'm going to fuck it or I'm going to kill it. All right, but it doesn't do this wishy-washy. I don't have an opinion. Go ahead, let it do whatever it wants to. Fuck you, pussy. One can make is to assign moral qualities, ethical ethical properties. I don't know, you know, yes, that's right, ethical. Quit, quit mixing these words up all over the place, all right? Can't we make a rule somewhere? You only use morality. You only use the word morality when you're talking about dogmatic theology, all right? When there's some sort of dogmatic, absolute morality that isn't based on anything called reason or logic or evidence. That's morality, all right? Ethics. Ethics is when you have to think about it. To, I need to make copies of my genes, or I need to do this because my biology compels me to. 
again, so this is the you, you're, you're making this argument about like you somehow you know what a natural fallacy is. Well, that's a natural fallacy because that doesn't fucking goddamn happen. All right, none of that shit is part of your goddamn biology. Um, your biology does one thing, okay? It, it penis, 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 penis. It's not doing baby, baby, baby. Nobody, fucking anybody, is thinking, oh, I'm making babies. No one. Really, at the end of the day, saying that it, it's somehow moral to have children and it's 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 an ethical thing is 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 equivalent, effectively, to saying you know it's moral to defecate because. Uh, you know, uh, yeah. So so that's that you're basically comparing. The burdens of existence, all the sentient life forms, all the like, young men who died in World War II, you're basically just saying they're shit. Okay, and if somebody wants to shit, it's okay. I mean, that's not what this is about. This is about an imposed trail of tears, essentially. This is about, again, the price will be paid by the losers. And unless you're willing to be one of the losers, you have no business being... Uh, ambiguous in your statement unless you're willing to walk their life their shoes their bad decisions every grisly sucky moment of their cruddy scuzzy existences uh, and I, I just know you you goddamn wouldn't if I put you on a comfy couch in the middle of non-existence and said oh yeah come on back to earth and live the life of this heroin addict okay who ends up you know raping his own kid and doing this and doing that and do it yeah, and ends up in prison for 35 years and blah, blah, blah. Live that life. You're not going to get off your couch to do that and you goddamn fucking know it. Intestinal tract leads up to this and blah, blah, blah. I mean, yeah, it's a bodily function. Okay, you have to do it. And for some people, some people have to have children. They're just controlled to that extreme. Oh, well, that's just stupid. They don't have to do it or they'll die. Uh. No, they don't have to go to the World Series. They don't have to go to Disneyland. Having to go to Disneyland is a silly notion in people's heads. It's nothing more. There's nothing intrinsically valuable about Disneyland. It's only their silly little notion in their silly little fucktarded head that makes them think that's a good place to wank. Oh, fucker. Yeah. But there's no moral quality to it. It's just, it's just biology. Oh, this is just silly to say something like that. It's just silly to say something. There's a fucking huge moral quality to it. You're imposing, fucker. Imposing automatically has an ethical quality to it. It has nothing to do with any of the weird arguments that Needless come up with. Uh, that said, uh, in, in that context, the anti Needless argument is a lot stronger than any Needless uh, argument because the anti Needless argument uh, argues from a position of let's separate the nature out of this let's not commit a naturalistic fallacy let's just talk about things such as suffering and happiness and what have you um, but we don't really have enough data out there to make a it says you we don't no you don't okay you're not smart enough to figure out that your desires are mostly projections of value that let's just say vagina for example doesn't have any intrinsic value it only has value to a male okay programmed to be horny for it there's no intrinsic value in it in and of itself where again the value of the sentient organism dying of some horrid disease a uh, chimpanzee falling out of a tree with polio and getting you know consumed by the jungle uh, <coughs> that has real meaning, substance, significance, and value. Not projected. Your brain, what your brain thinks, doesn't have anything to goddamn do with it. Reality of it. The mass assumption that suffering universally outweighs happiness. It could be the case, but it could also not be the case. It's my own position of... Yeah, well, I think your own position of bullshit is what I'll say. I could, like, again, if I put the worst case scenario and the best case scenario on the table, and I say, okay, you get to have that that best case, but you got to pay for it with that worst case. No fucking way are you buying that ticket. No way, and you goddamn fucking know it. Sympathetic neutrality. So, hopefully that's enough of an intro to antinatalism, and those are my thoughts on antinatalism. I could make another video on it in greater depth, but I, for those of you not familiar with it from the position, there you have it. Yeah, well, you made a mess out of it. 
frankly. And uh, you made a mess of even articulating your own position. Well, I think the anti-natalist position is probably superior in many ways. Uh, and the only way I see that the natalist position is superior is... Uh, uh, oh, that's right. It's a natural fallacy. They lose on that. It's uh, just production value. I lose on that. Oh, that's right. They have absolutely no merit to their decision whatsoever. They're just selfishly saying, I'm going to impose, I'm going to use something else as a fucking rag. I'm going to use something else as toilet paper for my ass. I'm going to wipe my ass with their welfare because it comforts me and makes me feel good. I'm going to risk their welfare because I want to watch them potentially fail. That's called sadistic, asshole. That's right, they're sadistic. And you're just, well, I don't have an opinion on sadism. Um, so, thanks for watching, and I shall see you guys uh, relatively soon, hopefully. God's willing. <laughs> no, that's, I don't know what that means. Don't even want to know what that means. Fuck the word. Enjoy your weekend. Ah, fuck you. Uh, anyway, I wonder which weekend it was. Did I enjoy it? <laughs> yeah, I think I did. I don't know. No, I probably didn't. Yeah, I was harassed all weekend. Uh, busy with this and that. Yeah. So it sucked. Anyway, maybe I should go through these comments. But what's the point? Yeah, they're just talking about Schopenhauer's hair. Yeah, I mean, that's how much people get it. What a world, what a world, what a world. Witch of the West or something. Anyway, um, yeah, 46 minutes, okay. It's a good test video. Until the next time. As always, I just fucking hate this planet. And, uh, yeah, until the next installment of I just fucking hate this planet.